Hello, everybody. Welcome. Press Star Gaming episode unknown. It's been a while. Uh, tonight I'm joined with me, got Mr. Todd Harden. Hello. Mr. Nick Rose. Yep. That's it. Oh, wait, hold on. User in your channel is recording. And Michael Fritz. Oh, wait, he's AFK still for the last four days. User was moved out of your channel. <laughs> Never mind. Do you prefer to be called Nick Rose or by your username, Nick? Or I, I don't know. I don't know what you like. To I, I mean, Nick is fine. It's the same Just Nick. thing. I say you, you don't. You can't assume his name. Well, Todd, your heart. You, your username is literally Todd M. Harden. So thanks for doxing me. It's not. It hasn't been that in a long time. <laughs> Okay, well, generally it is. Like, not since the 80s. Not since. <laughs> not since. Not since the Great War year. of 2020. Uh, yeah, or whenever I found out my old company's social media policy. Mm. But yeah, if you notice mm. on all the podcasts that I host, whenever I name people, I just say their first names now. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to attempt and butcher yeah. like even though most of them are fairly easy we don't need that whole tendo prefix <laughs> no his is uh jim shin impact right now yeah i know we were talking uh just randomly i apologize about getting into like shit. we were talking about his tattoo today uh, is he the one he's never ever ever gonna get uh so i mean i was like you know what he was oh. like i, I really want to get one and i was like okay it seems like the guys in the chat don't believe you. So it's like, you should just go get it done this weekend and have a picture taken while you're doing it. I don't believe that'll do happen. I mean... You Sorry, know. but reality says no. Uh, first of all... My goodness, did you hear that? What was... The, who's, who was that? That was, that was thunder. Right, but was that your house? Yeah, that was at my house. Oh, that's a bad sign for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought I was hoping it was at Nick's and it was a distance away. No. Uh, also, the logo that he wants tattooed is literally just looks like the L symbol from Death Note. Am I wrong? Uh, kind of. Yeah, but it's just like all old English. I, I realized <laughs> yesterday it's literally all the letters in every time I die. I just didn't realize it the first time I saw it. Yeah. But yeah, that's just the L from uh Death Note. Uh moving on, we're talking about video games. Oh. Yeah, so we to talk really quickly before we do um Wednesday Warfare this evening. Huh. Uh we had some pretty shocking news. Uh docked 18th, I was, which I, was yesterday. I was, this was yesterday. shocked. Okay. That it didn't happen I mean, sooner? No. I mean, I, I... Okay. Let's be realistic here. So, Bethesda was purchased last year for about $7.8 billion? Sounds right. Um, which was, like, a huge deal then, right? It was, like, the first time a big, huge slate of studios had been picked up by Microsoft in, like, such an aggressive manner, I guess you could say. Um... And like that just like blew my mind that all of a sudden these, you know, chain of studios was purchased and then, you know, the whole it's on Game Pass now and it's kind of like, oh, all right, whatever. It's not that big of a deal now. This feels like monumentally larger than that for some reason. Even though if you really look at the amount of studios that they acquired, it's not like. I don't think it matters the amount of studios and we'll discuss why. It's, yeah, it's, I it's guess the it's, it's more the IP. It's yeah. the IP, right? Yeah. So, first off, if you're living under a rock, <laughs> um, Microsoft is attempting to purchase Activision Blizzard and King for sixty-eight uh, billion dollars. Right. Yes, sixty-eight billion. Right. It's Sixty-eight billion. Yes, I heard the number. Sixty-eight point seven billion. Okay. Oh, bad. okay. You made it slightly uh, larger. It. Yeah. Right. That's not so, surprising. Like that number makes sense. The number makes sense. Now, I can if, justify if we, that number so easy. Right. 
and the thing is is like i'm not saying the number is absurd it's the fact that it got to a certain point where they were able to be acquired like this i mean any company is acquirable yeah Uh, and like uh microsoft or xbox being a derivative of microsoft the most popular who has the most popular os on the planet Mm -hmm. they have the funds to throw that money around i mean i'm surprised that activision wasn't bought by apple just because yeah well especially with uh king in their library exactly or google with stadia just throwing this on the screen and you actually found this for us earlier this is some of the largest um basically mergers that has been happening in recent years. Kind of the top of the list, Disney and 21st Century Fox. Which was for like 71, two years ago. Yeah, for $71.3 billion. Oh, I'm sorry. That's pre-COVID. It was four years ago. Right. But, like, <sighs> you would kind of think at that point, like, because those two IP, like, stocks of IPs coming together, that's pretty fucking monumental in and of itself. Right. And it's not that much more than this deal. Like, there's obviously a large gulf between, you know, Activision Blizzard and then Take Two and Zynga. I mean, is it? Yeah, 68.7 versus 12.7. That's a pretty large gulf. No, I mean, like, if you scale it to the sizes of the companies, it's not. That's true, I suppose. Uh, Take Two is a smaller publisher. It's still not the smallest by any means. Take Two publishes NBA 2K. They own uh, Gearbox. They run uh, Rockstar. Yeah, Uh, GTA, another thing that literally prints money every day. Right. But if you scale that down, Zynga would be like Activision when they bought King. Um, Zynga for a while dominated mobile gaming um, and by mobile gaming I mean stupid Facebook games Um, King now kind of dominates with Candy Crush of course but like whenever you think about it it all kind of lines up Um, Disney 21st Century Fox is a weird misnomer I don't understand why Disney made that purchase I mean I do understand why they made that purchase but like that one came out of left field for me Uh, AT&T Time Warner is another kind of weird one i think of that more as a technology company merger more than an entertainment company merger so that's one thing i wanted to point out there's a lot of people that are saying um the european um anti-trading commission is gonna have a, a fit with this there's no way I so I don't know. I mean, that's it depends on what you classify this as. Would you classify this as entertainment or tech? I'm saying Microsoft Activision is a IP acquiring. It's so I would say I would say entertainment more than anything else. Right. Yeah, all entertainment. I mean, what uh, proprietary tech does Activision Call of Duty runs on, on? Call of Duty runs on a specific engine. Maybe so. Oh, wait, I might be wrong. It might run on Unreal. Well, this is the other piece of that, though. Is oh, that did they stop this is becoming that's EA. That's oh, EA. right, right. So, this is actually becoming a separate company at this what point. Is? This all of everything that is gaming is going to be under Microsoft Gaming, which I thought it already was. No, it's a brand new division. Okay. Well, they probably had to do that before shit got too big. Sony does the same thing. Uh, yeah. Sony, Sony Computer Entertainment, Entertainment Studios is a... Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Sony Computer Entertainment is one mm-hmm. shell company, and then they also have within that Sony Computer Entertainment, which include or Sony Studios, which has all the different branches from there, like SCA, Santa mm-hmm. Monica Studios, all that jazz. Um, Microsoft should have probably done that a while ago with Microsoft Game Studios uh, getting as big as it is but they probably wanted to keep it closer because it's heavily tied into uh, Game Pass which is a good annual revenue to show on your books 
Uh, now they probably want to separate it off so that one valuates even higher. Right. Um, I don't know how stocks are going to be affected by that, but it's a big deal. Um, some of these other mergers that are listed on here are fucking weird. Like, who cares? Amazon and MGM? Metro Golden Meyer, like the old fucking movie studio? Yeah, I, that's only that's relevant only because a casino. Uh, no, because of James Bond. Oh, that's right. Because uh, James Microsoft, Bond is rolled up into that. Microsoft X Zenimax is Bethesda. For people that don't know, people on the stream, uh, Zenimax was the parent company of Bethesda, Arcane, all these other brands. Uh, Disney Pixar that was a Steve Jobs joint. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. That was a Bob Iger fixing Michael Eisner's fuck up with Steve Jobs. Correction. Uh, mm -hmm. Activision Blizzard King. Activision bought it strictly for Candy Crush. Let's not fool ourselves. Uh, Disney Marvel. They wanted the licensing for all that bullshit. Disney Lucasfilm. They wanted the licensing for all that bullshit. Mm -hmm. Just sure. Uh, Tencent Supercell. Uh, Supercell. That brand sounds familiar. Oh, uh, China wanted to buy Clash of Clans. That's what that is. Oh. Tencent is a huge Chinese publishing company. Yeah. Well, uh, Supercell got... makes, well, they have hands in a ton of other companies including... here stateside, including Microsoft, including Activision. Yeah. Probably every company on this list, they probably have some stake in it. Uh, they have a big stake with Epic, don't Correct. they as well? Uh, uh, I don't think, I don't know how much because Epic is still technically a private company, if I recall. Uh, I'll check that in a second. Uh, but Supercell is Clash of Clans, Boom Beach, Clash Royale. And that's similar to Candy Crush. It's one of those kind of acquisitions. Uh, let me check on that Epic thing. Well, so uh, the, the couple things it's a, I wanted to It's a private too. industry. It's still privately owned by Tim Sweetie. Oh, Tencent. Oh, you're right, Nick. Uh, Tim Sweeney owns 50% of Epic. And Tencent owns the other another forty percent. Mm. So, so yeah, good call. Close to close to majority. I mean, Tim Sweeney probably has like fifty point one percent to keep mm. keep a stranglehold. And the fact that they don't have uh, they don't have a public offering probably helps. That's true. Um, but, so go, go ahead. ahead. No, no. no. We're going, to, we're going to talk about what games they're buying in a minute. So I wanted to first gauge kind of what you guys think about this in general. Do you think this is a good move for the industry as a whole? Or do you think this is becoming monopolized at this point? Like this is a bad thing? Well, if I want to say that it would be becoming monopolized, but of all that they've acquired, I don't care about any of it. <laughs> like the Let's only, over, yeah. like the only thing that I would say I really care about are the two series that they, or the two franchises that I guess they currently technically own that came out back in the nineties. Uh, Warcraft uh, and Starcraft. No, Crash oh. Bandicoot and Spyro. That took a turn. Oh, <laughs> yeah, uh, the universal acquisition. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I don't believe it's an issue. For one, it's not a monopoly. There is no way that market is a monopoly when Nintendo and Sony are sticking around. So it's a triopoly, uh, which kind of sucks, but who cares? Uh, EA still exists. Take Two still exists. I mean, Disney makes games technically. Eh, not many. Yeah. Make so. Them. But if you think about the the amount of third party developers for consoles these days, how many third party developers could you name off the top of your head? Uh, current third party that aren't tied into the big companies. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, uh fuck, what is that? Team one? Ninja. Uh, I thought they were owned by Microsoft. They are. The what's uh what's the other are you talking one? About, are you talking about Ninja Theory? Ninja Theory, that's no. Um, I think Ninja I think Ninja Theory is also owned by Microsoft now. Uh Grasshopper Studios. Uh I'm just gonna From Software. 
from software is probably one wrong. of the few that oh, I can that, think of. But I'm talking, I'm talking, that's dark I'm stuff, talking right? like, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking like huge ass publishers now. Yeah. That that have a staple. Okay, so EA is the last, right? I mean, what is yeah. all right? But the you're last... talking about publishers. Publisher is different than developer, though. Yeah, true. Because publisher you're is just correct. who's fronting the money for advertising. Right. Well, no, I'd argue development costs too. Slight development costs, but as far as developers, is pretty much you know on them to uh gather their money resources and everything they can get a they can get a bump if they get it with a good publisher but it's basically selling yourself and today in the age of well everything's either coming early access or crowd crowdsourcing like that's not an issue uh if somebody wants to release uh an a or double a rated game but if anybody wants to put their name as a triple a then yeah they have to have a publisher but uh, i think triple a is kind of becoming monopolized in itself by just being the same thing for every other system for every other game of its type it's like if you look at call of duty a uh, triple a game every other triple a game is just call of duty with a different skin right and i mean on top of that double a games died a long time ago uh no, not necessarily. Like, uh, Hellblade: Sinuous Sacrifice. That I'm pretty was, sure that was made by a branch of Sony. Uh, the, no, the thing that's is, nin- that's, that's ninja still theory. a double A game, and yeah, that was that was Ninja Theory. It was even, yeah, it was Ninja Theory, and that's still released on multiple consoles. And mm. that was technically a double A game. It released for forty bucks. Ninja Theory. Is a first party video game development studio based in Cambridge. Yeah, that was before, but that was, again, my point again, Double A is dead. This game came out in 2018. 2018? Oh, was sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Four years ago? <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Hellblade, Senior the Sacrifice. Came out in 2017. 2017. So that, yeah. All right, five so years that's ago. five five years ago. You make it sound like that in a decades ago. I I, I, so, I I didn't clarify a date. You put one in there. Your mind. Double A is dead. Double A is not dead. There's still plenty. I like. I just said one example, but I know. there's plenty of examples of Double A games still being around. They're just not as highly touted. Mm-hmm as the triple a game triple a gets all the media all the marketing and everything but double a games still exist and people still love them and still buy them that's why they keep releasing sequels for them let me let me Ooh. name you another double a game no man's well, let, let, let me name you another game todd fall guys they they were yeah, published pretty by much Sony. everything by devolver digital yeah devolver is like one of the few publisher developers that's still around that's on their own sure um uh, again kingdom come deliverance greedfall kingdom come deliverance like half You're... the things that's that's popular on the switch that's not a uh tales of arise game that's like not a jump. uh first party title those are like Devolver, double a yeah. games I, I i would say they're closer to indie for a lot of them um what's the no more here yeah no more that's, heroes that's grasshopper studios i would agree with you that they are double a but again in general we're naming companies that have long tenure that have decided not to be merged those are the outliers but in general i don't see many that break through the cracks like jeff mitch and fall guys which is fuck i forgot the company that made it uh doesn't matter they had Sony publish it. So it's kind of a weird mixed bag on that. And then it, it's, it makes it harder. Like, I feel like those games struggle more unless they turn into like a cult classic game like Hellblade or Fall Guys had weird momentum coming out whenever it first popped on the scene that was 
unheard of. I would even classify No Man's Sky in that same category. If I remember right, that company is not owned by Sony, but they had all of Sony's PR might behind them. Yeah, they yeah. were. It was published by Sony, but it, so they were given the boost of of Sony and all all the uh, marketing stuff for it. But it's still a fell in, apart. Yeah, indie developer, right? A uh, double A game, and they were they. It was almost being touted as a triple A game. How hard they were right doing it, but it was still double A. You could say it was fairly indie with that whole spiel about the uh 15 quintillion planet or whatever <laughs> but the, the i mean yeah so it still fell never, hard on its face you'll never see the same planet as someone else day and one someone you see the did. same planet yeah um so yeah like like we brought up these big companies have bought a ton of them do i think that this is an issue do i think this is monopoly no um, do we want to talk about what Microsoft is getting out of this? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So obviously the big one is Call of Duty. Okay. That's the biggest franchise in gaming, basically, uh, valued at over $5 billion, according to Forbes, uh, Candy Crush about a billion dollars, according to Forbes as well. That's the King purchase is really working that. This is just Activision right now. We're going to go over other stuff in a bit. Uh, Skylanders is still valued highly. I don't know how. because Skylanders? Skylanders and the Spyro world universe I is now fucking... all together. No, oh. no, no. I'm saying that they put Spyro in Skylanders. I got you. And I they, you. for some reason, added some Spyro other like spinoff games into that number i don't know why forbes did it like this um personally this forbes is dumb and forbes is not written by gamers um spyro had a remake recently which did very well crash bandicoot had a rebate remake which did really well um whenever you go over to blizzard whenever you think of things that look great on a conference call World of Warcraft with their repeating monthly charges always will make your numbers look good. Uh, they say there's about 12 million subscribers at its peak. It's probably significantly less now, of course. Um, you have Diablo and its various things that mobile game will probably eventually come out and make them a shit ton of money. Uh, you have fucking you have Overwatch. I mean, for better yep. or for worse, Overwatch is still huge. Uh, and then you also have to add in the esports versions of a lot of these. Because Call of Duty has a Call of Duty League. And then um, Overwatch has Overwatch League. I don't know how profitable Overwatch League is anymore. Uh, and I know Call of Duty had some problems getting off the ground. But, I mean, that's that's a lot of IP that can... Just spit out money if you do it right. I yeah, know, so course, you I, think about like, smaller shit. Like Call of Duty, f for one, like obviously prints money every year. Candy Crush prints money, I'm still sure. Mm -hmm. And then you have your other IP that you can really hone in on. You know, Diablo, World of Warcraft, Overwatch, StarCraft. Um, now, they haven't, if I recall correctly, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, there hasn't been a StarCraft recently. No. A, new, a new StarCraft. There hasn't been a new Warcraft recently. There's been a remake, but that was also broken. Uh -huh. And people got refunds on it. Uh, Overwatch 2 has been delayed for like two years. Right. Uh, and then Activision has Call of Duty, but they use a three or four developer cycle to keep that on track. Yeah, it's typically uh if I, any I believe it's Arc, for Raven. If any war Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer, Raven, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um so that that's always a, a that's a known quantity. That's a known boost to your quarter four. Um my brain just went out. Numbers, whatever. Uh who makes MLB the show? 
Uh, that is a Sony first party. That's Sony first party. Got it. Sorry. I, I remember it coming out on Xbox and I was very confused for a second. I forgot that they just, for some reason, decided to port it directly to Xbox. My bad. Uh, and that's the thing that, uh, Xbox was saying is like all the games that were at on all different systems that's not going to change they're still going to be released on different systems it's just microsoft owns the rights to it <laughs> we're gonna do what we want i mean pretty much I'm, I'm excited for it because xbox has done a pretty good job of making their games multi-platform or at least available in multiple ways Plus, let's be honest, this gives even more value to Game Pass. Like, oh, yeah. Game Pass is the best deal in video games. By a mile. Uh, I mean, think of it. We're going to get all of Bethesda games, probably day one, for free. We're going to get probably Call of Duty, day one, for free. Overwatch, like... That's that's a lot of value for I think what 10 15 bucks a month unless they do it the same way that EA or they do it with uh, the EA games where it's you if you have game pass like ultimate then you get the game for free on their launcher but if you just have game pass regular it doesn't work for PC well that doesn't make sense cuz game pass is their launcher Oh, unless are oh, you're saying keep, if they keep it in Battle.net, yep, whatever it's called now, is it called Battle.net still? Yeah, still Battle.net. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Uh, that would that would suck. I don't think that's gonna be the case. I don't think so. I hope not. Let me rephrase that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I don't know. So. I mean, it's there's there's an article. Sorry, my dogs are freaking out over there. Hey, you got some uh, first network activity okay. going? Yeah, it's glass wire having a fit. I, I, I could tell. Uh, that's that would um, be interesting though. Like, if your Game Pass subscription gave you a World of Warcraft su- subscription. See, that's that's where it's going to get really strange because. Yeah. In in my mind, it's you're not going to get a subscription for free. You're basically are getting the base game for free. Because if I'm not mistaken, if I go to shop right now, um, shop the installer isn't free, is it? World of Warcraft for the first few levels is free nowadays. Yeah, I think that yeah, once like if you go up to level ten you can play for free, but then you can't go any higher than that. If it's the same way as it was 15 years ago, <laughs> but uh, I have not kept up with it. So I don't 100% know. Oh, you can get a baby Murloc. Yeah, go back. Yeah. yeah. So I, this is, that's the curious thing, right? It's like hey, your profile how, how, got canceled. I know. Jesse McCree. That's not his name no more. It's Cassidy something. Cole Cassidy. Cole Cassidy. Stupid. So, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I I imagine we're going to get, you know, the base games for free, like Diablo, Diablo 2, the remake, classic, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but when it comes to, like, a subscription-based model, I don't think, I don't think like, so. it doesn't make, I don't think it makes sense for them to include that. Because like Xbox Game Pass right now doesn't have any, to my knowledge, um, subscription based games right now. Uh, uh, is ESO in it? No. That's really not. Wow. No, I don't think so. Uh, and then Fancy Star is free to play. Uh, Minecraft. Uh, not subscription based them realms we have to pay for them i know oh so uh, fallout 76 is free to play right is there, i i thought that was just because how bad they botched it 
Yeah, I think it's free to play until they can figure out another way to move in some way to mooch money. Yes, it's an uh, injury I haven't played in 12 minutes. Um, hey, uh, Jeff, rough. you got a UAC prompt that you need to take care of? I know, that's uh, so I can Streamlabs. I clicked on that on accident. Um, I still I still default to Streamlabs in my brain before person. opening up OBS. You're a bad person. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like how that's... Okay. Can we, can we talk about Bobby Kotick? Yeah, so this is... So him in general, and the fact of the matter is, is like, there's still a sexual harassment lawsuit going on actively. There are still employee walkouts all the time. There's inequality within the company. There's a whole bunch of things that is broken within Activision Blizzard. And, you know, a couple months ago, every, I would say, major head of each gaming um, kind of division kind of came out and said, oh, this is kind of fucked up. Like, Phil Spencer of Xbox came out and said it. Um, I want to say it's Jim Jones for Sony. I don't even know if that's actually accurate, <laughs> to be honest with you. The dude at Sony... And I even the even Nintendo, they're all like, "Oh, we're like reevaluating our business relationship with them. We're trying to like actively get away from them." And then, like this whole thing came out where they purchased this company, and it's like, "Well, I mean, apparently they're not broken enough to not be purchased, right? For to, to, to be bought out, and so." The fact of the matter is, is, right now, currently, he is going to be CEO until this whole deal closes, which is... If the deal closes, if he is still CEO, he will receive a $293 million severance because of a, a clause in his contract where if you're bought out by a, comp a corporate company like Microsoft, you get this package. That's not to mention the amount of money he's made over the years. Just like it's, it's ridiculous. The dude makes way too much money. Um, but the fact is, is that he's still in power. For now. He's still for, for now. And you got all this shit happening and it kind of, hey, it's say it, it starts from the top down, right? He's still there and all of this shit is still happening, which apparently Microsoft is cool with. That's basically what they're saying at this moment. Um, so I'm I'm really torn here because in once this fiscal year closes or once this deal closes, Phil Spencer is apparently taking over the entire thing. Oh lord! Which is, from that's what I understand, that's too much. Xbox. So, so he'll be CEO of basically Microsoft Gaming, and that includes this whole deal in addition to Bethesda in addition to everything else that he's in charge of right now. So yeah, that's a lot, right? And if you already have a problem now with just this small or not, not small, but this subset of your business, I don't see it getting any better once this dude takes over. Wait, hold on. Are you talking about X Xbox? Or uh, Phil Spencer having a problem with Activision? I, I what Are I'm saying, saying is that Microsoft that... is kind of just like letting it slide for now. Is that what you're they, kind of going for? Kind of. Yeah. But they just bought it, right? And they also no, have 100%. not actually bought them yet, right? They have to go through the regulatory approval. What I'm saying, Nick, is that the CEO is going to step down. So in 2023, yeah. when Phil Spencer fully takes over the company, right? I don't have confidence that anything is really going to change because uh, of the the scope that he now has under his belt, essentially. So to say is, is if they can't fix the problem is independently now, like how is it going to get better once they get absorbed by a larger corporation? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, okay, okay. I see what you're talking about. Uh, I mean, my hope, prayer, wish is eventually 
um, they split the hardware part of Xbox out. Oh yeah. Well, in, okay. In, maybe into the Surface division, the hardware, all the hardware com- parts come together, and then it's just one big. Um, I'm gonna steal Sony's idea: Microsoft Computer Entertainment Corporation. And then Phil Spencer leads that, but he well, CEOs all these other ones below him. So to be honest with you, I think the hardware division is going to be going away. You don't think they're going to make hardware anymore? I think at a point they're going to stop. Why? Because Can't go the way of Sega? Not the, no, not the way of Sega. Because they've always said, um. Don't quote me on the exact articles. The, the, hardware, mm-hmm. the hardware business for them has always been a loss leader. Always. Right. Um, but it's, that's it's because really they're doing it weird in comparison right. to Sony. Sure. But eventually, the, the whole goal is, is to get your software and your gaming services division up enough. My opinion is, is that with this play with Game Pass, the long play for it, is to make it so ubiquitous that it's going to be on every single device natively. It's going to be on your TVs natively. It's going to be, uh, if you can have a hardware dongle, just like a fire stick. You so you're saying the they want to go the way of Stadia. Yeah, but better, right? Because, I mean, you can't be better they're... than the power of Google. Yeah, uh, everyone wants to do what the other does, other person's doing better in hindsight, but it's just, Streaming isn't there yet. Also, well, don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that next console generation swings around and Microsoft isn't doing some sort of hardware. What I'm saying is, is that it's going to be underpowered to the point where you, you don't need an Xbox Series X, essentially, to run these games. Gotcha. Um, I, I feel like they're going to have a thing where it'll partially download the game to where in combination with streaming, you're going to get like the best visual fidelity possible type thing. It's going to be like a hybrid approach, if you will. So this is an older article. Uh, apparently the Xbox One was not a loss leader. Uh, they broke even to slight profit depending on the model. Okay. What I oh. expect... I apologize. If you all haven't watched the Xbox documentary, by the way, fantastic watch. I don't watch documentaries. And neither do I. I'm too stupid. Um, So good. I get bored easy. I'd rather play a game. Um, One thing about it, what I see happening is kind of what you're saying, Jeff. Um, What I see is they no longer make actual console boxes. Yeah, they make, they make streaming boxes, uh, yeah, and they they work with the Surface team to maybe make Xbox branded computers that are certified for blah 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 certain, resolution certain that, that experiences. Right. Yeah, certain experiences. They already do that with monitors. They have Xbox certified monitors, so I think it's just an extension of that. Um, uh, do I think that there will be an Xbox 10 years from now? Probably not. Uh, but there will be a box made by the company Microsoft no matter what. Um, it, it just kind of depends on the shape. Uh, I don't think Azure is ready for the big time. Like, um, I think they're just getting their feet wet. Right? I mean, like yeah, if you... If you if you play a game within um, Xbox Cloud Gaming right now, the technology is there. It's working rather well. Is it perfect? No. Is it ever going to be perfect? Unless we all have gig speeds within our house. Um, no, I, I don't think it will be. Like it's the the latency but you're saying is it's also good enough. It's good it's, enough. It's, you know, okay, but that's it's possible. You living in a metropolitan city. Now, if you were living in a flyover state where internet's run on graham crackers, then uh, how do you think that's going to fly? 
Well, that's what I'm suggesting, right? So right now, I'm saying it's not ready for prime time to be the sole place where you play games. I think eventually we're going to get to a certain point, and I'm hoping, um, you know, with <laughs> if, if government works correctly, that there will be... Right, which is a fucking... <laughs> Never gonna happen. Let right? me let me look up who's FCC chairman right now. Right. So the goal would be eventually in those oh, rural areas, okay. you would have better internet access at some point, right? But I, we're talking like at least a decade. So here's a, here's an issue. So Jeff, you're talking. You you've played games on cloud streaming, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What games did you play? Uh, Forza, Forza Five. Okay, so you played a racing game. Uh -huh. um, racing games do require really finite things, but you can also kind of get away with that with Drive Assist. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, I played Destiny 2 on Stadia. There is no way that Call of Duty could come out on Stadia. Oh uh, yeah, the latency is just too high. Right. So, again, that's what makes me think that there will always still be devices hanging around. Because, again, you brought up earlier, networking is an issue. But I was hardwired on 1,000 up, 1,000 down. And I still couldn't play Destiny. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I understand. You know, there's, there's always going to be... Right now. That was a uh, typewriter. No, I'm playing, playing? Uh, Subnautica. Okay. Are you playing the DLC? DLC? Oh, uh, Sub-Zero? Yeah. yeah. It's a sequel. Oh, it's and a sequel? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah it's a full-on sequel. Okay. Who made that, by the way? Is that Double A? <laughs> it is One Double A, One of Double A actually. studios. <laughs> well, Double A is that. dead. Uh, Unknown Worlds Entertainment? Never heard of them. Oh, Outer Wilds, too. Forgot about that. Ah, oh, that's such a good game. Double A. Uh, like, wait, a Outer... lot of double A games, they're getting, they're getting the praise, and people are saying, this is one of the best goddamn games I've played in almost a decade. And But they're getting slept on by, like, most, mainstream, like media. mainstream media. Because, yeah, it's not triple A. It doesn't have, it's not being shoved down your throat. Outer uh, by marketing departments that uh, this is the hottest game of the season. If your kids uh, don't ask for this, then they're fucking noobs. And if your parents don't get it for you, they don't love you. Kind of, yeah. Jeff, did you say Outer Worlds or Outer Wilds? Outer Wilds. Outer Wilds. Who made that? Um, ooh, I should know it's this. A, it's a great it. game. I love that game. It's, a, it's one of the, if you don't know, we'll enlighten you on one of the better games from a couple years ago. It is a time loop game. Uh -huh. um, you experience a giant world, multiple worlds, like a universe, solar system, uh, and you have to solve the puzzle of the entire universe within 20, 20 minutes, I think. Yeah, 20, uh, 21 minutes. And then the world resets. And then Moby if you didn't finish it. Your bone. Mobius Digital and Annapurna Interactive. Annapurna, there it is. Also, right, that makes sense. Uh, Nick, apparently your favorite batteries are double A. Huh? According, your favorite batteries are double A, according to Andrew. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he's right. <laughs> he's like, I don't he's think right. I, I own a single D cell. <laughs> uh, I hope you got fire alarms. <laughs> or smoke alarms those work on 9 volt oh you said D um, I apologize no no vibrators for you <laughs> oh actually no that I think I do of. have I do have a mag light but that yeah Same oh idea. hold on let me see alright um, what else you got on this Jeff I, I think we've talked about the games we talked about yeah. the future so... I mean, it, overall, it is a, I'd say, a shocking development. Shocking. We, we, knew, we knew that at some point a, a larger play was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm kind of curious to see. I mean, to me, in my opinion, EA is now firmly in crosshairs. No. Oh, I 100% no. think so. I, hope I mean, because if you think about it right now, EA is already on Game Pass. Challenge everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, see, which has hit 25 million subscribers, by the way. Game Pass? Game Pass. They just announced that in, this, in the same little blurb. They're like, oh, yeah, 25 million Man, subscribers. Game Again, Sweet. Game Pass is such a good deal. So, that is one thing I do want to mention. With these acquisition plays... Right now we're at fourteen ninety nine flat. No, I want to say that's for ultimate. For ultimate, you, yes. You don't have right. to do that. You don't have to, but ultimate is you know, ultimate is ultimate. Pretty good. It's the only one that gives you access to the uh, EA library as well as the cloud gaming. Mm -hmm. and uh, so if you wanted to play the PC console versions, EA. Nope. No, uh, I'm looking at the fucking website. It might you take you out of some games. Like there's, are you talking about, because uh, they have the EA is. Play, EA Play Pro, but if you don't have Ultimate, then it doesn't let you do EA Play, the basic version of it. Yeah, let's, let's just get a game pass real quick. There you go. Maybe they changed something, and I'm not aware of it. I mean, I've had EA Play since the beginning. Well, yeah, I had I had EA Play as well, but then that's when I had Ultimate, and they uh, back like three years ago, and they had this whole thing when they first came out oh, that you could do. Uh, it, is, oh, it is different now. It is different. I've, oh, so, I've, I've never had Ultimate. Okay, so PC right now it's ten dollars a month. Also includes EA Play. Right. But it oh. does. There are some games that I believe are called EA Play Pro or something like that. Right, it's that like is the super different. new releases in mm -hmm. some random bullshit. Like usually, like the current version of Madden, the current version of FIFA, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so ultimate at this point, the only but it does critical not difference. Show the difference on this page. Right. The only critical difference is is that you also gain access to console games if you have a console. Right. But you also gain access to console games through the cloud. And yeah, gold. but and I don't Xbox own gold. an Xbox, so. Right. Yeah, but Xbox Live Gold at this point is you don't even think about it, you know. I mean, like it's with... still it's still ten dollars a month by itself, or you can sure. add five dollars and get Game Pass Ultimate. Sure. So I mean, it, this this is what I what I'm fearing. Okay, Netflix continually has been hiking their they prices. Just announced another one, I believe. Yeah, I was Correct. just told that they uh, brought a brought in another price hike. So, and the reason why their prices have gone up is because of their acquisition plays and the amount of money they're spending on original content. So it stands to reason that we're getting, you know, in with this sweet deal right now, which is a fantastic deal. If this could easily go up to thirty dollars a month, I think. Easily. Jeez. And I think we would pay for it. Because think about it this way. Yes, they're saying, hey, all the games that we have right now, they're gonna be on as many devices as possible. PlayStation's a huge chunk of the Call of Duty player base, right? However, they also said that originally about Bethesda. They said, we're going to have it as many devices as possible, blah, blah, blah. And then Starfield was announced. And right. they're saying, well, Starfield is going to be an exclusive. Yeah, but PC. is it like, I thought, I thought they exclusive said timed. or timed exclusive? That's the thing. We don't know. But here's the thing: if you are if you are a huge Call of Duty player, you've always gotten it day one. If if Xbox comes out and says, "Hey, we're going to give you Call of Duty three months before PlayStation," <coughs> that's a pretty substantial difference. Yeah, but is that any different than how they're doing it now, where uh, if you buy whatever like battle? pass or whatever it's called 
you uh-huh. get a weak head start of some people and uh for people that are really into call of duty a week is a hell of a long time for somebody to get the edge on you learn the well, maps and all that stuff that's what i'm it's saying just, it's a it's just they keep pushing it out i want to say it's the exact same thing like um when stores were opening earlier and earlier for black fridays and one store said oh okay well we're going to open up on 4 a.m friday then another store the next year yeah we're doing a 2 a.m then eventually it turned into on thursday at 12 a.m we're having our black friday sale right and it's just it's just going to keep naturally progressing until it just implodes on itself and then now yeah nobody nobody is doing that or it's very few are doing that so right. if they just release it uh earlier and earlier or give somebody uh the timed exclusives or something like that uh to wrap up starfield uh i got some clarification uh pete hines has said this is a quote directly if you want to play starfield it's xbox and pc sorry all i can do is apologize that's it and uh for people that don't know p hines is the I, i'm gonna say the voice of bethesda that's the easiest way to phrase it uh he's head of marketing for them um so yeah it looks like it's just pc and xbox no but no ps5 at all now if if that is the case then we could probably safely say elder scrolls 6 right yeah yeah yeah. But this is this is what I'm trying to say. Like eventually, you know, they're gonna look at how much money they're making. I'm sure. I'm sure it's a substantial amount of money that they make off PlayStation, right? Right. But it's gonna get to a point where they could easily look at Diablo and say, you know what, we're we're, we're all gonna release Diablo on PC and Xbox. That's it. And just call it a day. And the, and if someone's like, Well, that's not cool, and they're like, Well, I'm sorry, pay pay that's... the fee. Play yeah. Xbox. Hmm. Like it, but this is but by this is already happened the power. before. This has happened before with so many other franchises. Yeah. Um, Bayonetta, release for everything. Nintendo acquires it. Now it's only on the Switch. I mean, sure. What's the difference? Uh, the, the, Nintendo, there is no difference. Nintendo acquired Platinum, right? No. Isn't that who makes Bayonetta? Yeah, they uh they make Bayonetta. Did I don't think they acquired Platinum. I thought they were part of the Sega umbrella. Uh I'm Platinum gonna... was is an individual studio. Oh, oh. <laughs> I left my prawn suit at my base and I went all the way down here. Okay. Yeah, you're you're right. Uh they are they are an independent studio. They must have had some of their games published by Sega and I just Oh yeah. So, Partner, partnership with Sega. Okay, cool. The ma- the major difference, Nick, is, is I would say that like Call of Duty is such a large franchise. For them to go exclusive to one system is a pretty large deal. Okay, it's not yeah. one system, it's Xbox and PC. And then you got um what you call it? Um the Steam the Steam console handheld. Steam I mean deck. that's yeah, Steam Deck. All right, so that's going to basically be a PC but handheld cons console ish type thing. And okay. that can play all the PC all the PC games. I'm not I'm not sure what your argument is. Is that there's still pl- you're just saying that it's excluding PlayStation? Sure. Okay. So, and once the next ones come out, different uh, console generations, like they can just get a PlayStation. <laughs> you don't. You guys don't have phones. No, what I'm saying is, is that by these acquisitions occurring, it's it's going to eventually start limiting the amount of third party support. And yeah. honestly, oh well, uh, one more thing is that when you limit 
like how many consoles something goes to, games usually get better. Because well, I don't disagree with you at all. Yeah, because now they don't have to worry about like developing for another console. They can focus more things on the consoles that they are working on, and then it usually comes out to a better product. Sure, but I would also argue that competition breeds more and better products. Yeah, that just means PlayStation needs to come out with a a Call of Duty killer. So they can bring uh, back SOCOM. Yeah, that's what I, was, I was gonna say that or Resistance or something like that. They need to get their fucking shit figured out on the Sony side. This is not only like are they starting to lose potentially third party developers, they're gonna start losing to Xbox in terms of cloud gaming. And this Game Pass deal, like it, it boggles my mind that Sony cannot look at what Xbox is doing and say, Jesus, if we just offered for like eight dollars a month uh, a Sony Classics collection, which would allow you to play every PlayStation game one, two, and three, even four, for like one set price, like a backlog. You mean PlayStation Now? No, I don't mean PlayStation Now because it's not the same thing. Think think about how Xbox works right now, right? You can literally go to the library and you can download a copy of I don't know, games all the way back to Xbox. And it runs it runs within an emulator on the actual box, right? Mm-hmm. PlayStation Now is streamed to the cloud, correct? Uh yeah. Okay, so which has obvious obvious pitfalls, which we've already discussed. What I'm saying is, is that if they've basically created a system that's just a direct duplicate of Game Pass, to where you could download all the PlayStation games you want, all the fucking PlayStation Two games, PlayStation Three, that library is deeper than Xbox has. Well, maybe not now. I was looking no. at it. Yeah. But, um, all right. So, when you brought up how streaming works uh, for Game Pass, I have tried it before as well. And I agree with you that it works somewhat. Like, I tried playing Deep Rock, and, you know, uh-huh. that's not a super intensive graphics game. intensive rock, game. Rock and Stone. Uh, rock and Stone to the bone. But, it's it still had you know it's uh pitfalls practicalities and stuff because of just the architecture in it being a newer game made now here's the thing if you go if you want to stream a ps2 game which can fit like what uh one two gigs tops of how large of a game it is for to stream something like that a hell of a lot easier Mm -hmm. and like which is what playstation now is yeah that that, that already does that it's a hell of a lot easier so it doesn't have the same shortcomings as game pass does with its streaming so i guess what i'm trying to say is is that take playstation now as it stands right now the streaming okay all right Take and then my PlayStation now, please. Add on the component of being able to also download games, just like Xbox Game Pass does. Okay. Charge mm-hmm. a flat monthly rate for it and call it a day. Still wouldn't it's have not that it wouldn't have the library. What do you mean? I don't think PlayStation has the library. Uh, PlayStation compute... definitely has the library, especially PS2 era stuff. Oh, okay. PS2, yeah, but old game old. Yeah, old game is old. And then there's also the difference of um, most of the games that you have for the uh, Xbox on the Xbox 360, on the console, I mm-hmm. should say, is was made backwards compatible. And right. wasn't there whole, the whole thing with the architecture of the PlayStation's... The uh, sound mapping, processor! That would make it difficult. Yeah, that would make it so. Difficult. 
and it's not even a it's not a uh, software issue like you can just download an emulator update. It's an it's an architecture issue of the hardware. So, but I would disagree with that. That because would be a whole different with, system that they would need. No, because right now Xbox backwards compatibility. It's running a 360 emulator on Xbox. Yeah, we're not talking about Xbox, though. We're talking about PlayStation. The whole reason why, like, they lost on their their fat PS3s could play all the previous consoles, but then they made the new Slim model that ditched that, that feature. If it was just an update that they could do, why wouldn't they do that? Right. Because, because they're remember, dumb. Right, because if I remember right, the, PS, the first PS3... Could play had PS2 a, games. Right. Because it had a physical PS2 in it. Right. Yeah. So, and then, uh, was it, uh, homebrew hackers who have hacked the PlayStation 3 right. have not gotten it to run PS2 games. Right. Because the cell processor is stupid. But yeah. What, but what are we talking about here? Well, I'm talking saying about... we're losing a whole generation of games unless they. But what have are we running it on? A PC. Yeah, are you PC. saying that so, uh, Sony should uh, have a downloadable catalog for PC? Uh, no. You were saying you want it like Game Pass. Which yeah, is for PlayStation. Right, which is downloadable. So on the console. On the console. So, But if their consoles can't do that, they would have to make a console that can do that. I, I, just sincerely, to have that. I sincerely believe there is a way if we have PlayStation 3 emulation on a PC right now, which we do. Do we? Yes, we do. It's difficult, but it works. Uh, okay. I also have what Excel saying, on my PC. I don't have it on my <laughs> PlayStation. But what I'm saying is, is that a PlayStation 4 or even a PlayStation 5 uh -huh. should have the hardware capable of running an emulator of a PlayStation 3 game. It okay. I think you're I think you're being very positive about it and I appreciate you. The fact is that the current best known PS3 emulator that I see available can only play sixty-three percent of PS3 games. Shows which is problem. better than what which is better than what a current PlayStation 5 can play, right? Which is zero percent natively. I'm saying if that's and that's without access to Sony's tools. So so not only do you want to copy Game Pass, you also want to make somebody buy a five hundred dollar PS5. Well, I mean, I'm saying that's the latest version, right? Like if okay, you're so gonna you want them to buy it, a new version that hasn't come out yet that can do no, this. No, 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 no. Don't twist my words, my friend. I'm twisting. Okay. The uh, version I'm, I'm... that is out right now, PlayStation Five, right? Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. That is the that is the the newest model, right? Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should be capable of running an emulator with an update. Just like Xbox eventually received an emulator to run 360 in Xbox games. Okay. Now, if they if they want to go the extra mile, and because they're apparently producing more PlayStation 4 still, and if they want to release an update for PlayStation 4 that does the same thing, more power to them. But I think the focus should be PlayStation 5. That's the forward-facing console. It doesn't make sense to dedicate resources to exclusively PlayStation 4. You see what I'm saying? No, what would make sense is putting all their games on PC. Sure, and they could do that too if they no, really wanted not, to. No, not two or as well instead of. No, I don't think so. You're saying Sony should go the way of Sega and just software. because uh, software published forever because yes. this is the problem with that todd is right now you can't run console games natively on pc through game pass it's the same thing uh that's not correct that is okay how is that not correct uh uwp most okay. i would Xbox, like you i most, would like you to play uh, halo 5 guardians first on of all PC. i refuse to play that Okay, but that is a native What's Halo Xbox 5 game. Guardians? Yeah, did that, uh, it's garbage. That's called Infinite, sir. No, it's not called Infinite. No, but... uh, Halo 5 is Infinite. No, I thought <sighs> that's Halo 6. No, it's Infinite. It is. 
Infinite is Halo. No, it's five. Halo so, five Guardians. Again, I will point this out. Okay. And you can nitpick it, which I 100% agree. But uh, currently today, if the uh-huh. div- if Xbox chooses to, the same exact version of a game can be run on PC and console. Oh, that's correct. The, with, uh, with no changes. Yeah. The same executable can run under UWP. They already do it with Gears of War, Forza Horizon, Recore, Sea of Thieves, Halo Wars 2, Scalebound, Killer Instinct, State of Decay, Ark Survival Evolved, Cuphead, We Happy Few, and Crackdown 3. Yeah, that's the whole reason why you can't uh, go into the settings files for damn yeah, near games. 80% of all their games is because it's just the same version that's on the Xbox. So you can't like do much modding only for specific games that they've allowed that for. Right. Okay. So but that's what I'm saying. You you brought up the the differences. I'm saying that today if they wanted to, they can do that. You said load a console game on my PC. If I load those games up, I'm loading the exact same edition that comes out on Xbox. Yes, I'll agree with that. Okay. I, I like, but, but 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 the only <laughs> the only distinction I'll say nope. to that there <laughs> is nope. a distinction. You're trying to get the last word. Nope. I'm not trying to get the last word. What is it then? Like I'm, what I'm saying is, is like the Xbox 360 games, for instance. I can't run those on PC. Right, but you didn't specify console. So oh. I got, so I got so I got to choose. Oh. That was the whole Come point of now. that was the whole point of the current generations of Xbox. They were built on the x86-64 platform, which, so which they could also, just move around. Which also is what for the PlayStation 4? I mean, I agree. PlayStation is running an AMD 64-bit processor. Why mm-hmm. is it so hard to port games? Why do they need a whole other studio to do it? Riddle me that, Batman. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> like, I don't understand how Xbox could put their biggest games out on day and date on PC and Xbox, where it takes literal five years for God of War to show up, or two years for Forza Horizon, or, or not, well, Forza, because... not Forza Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn, my apologies. Because... And then a year for fucking Death Stranding. Because it wasn't originally designed to be... Okay, I'm, I'm going to throw this out here. Um, because the if you, if you design- start... If you start right uh-huh. Uh-huh. in the development cycle and say, "Hey, we're going to support PC and Xbox on day one," but then you there just call most out likely the... no, there are most likely different divisions within the studio that says, "Okay, we're going to be responsible for making sure this runs on PC. You can be responsible for making sure it runs on Xbox." But you just called Xbox, out that the PS5 is the same architecture as a PC. You just it use is. that argument against it is correct. Me, but now you're it using is. it as the reason why it's not working. Because on PC? yes, because it was originally designed for PlayStation 5 exclusively. Which is X64. Right? Correct. But you're not thinking about the graphics components. I'm thinking about everything. I don't think you are. I, I I'm I could be wrong. Unreal Engine 5, I'm pretty sure works on both. Could be wrong. Uh it does, but Unreal but, Engine 5. That, 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 that. Frostbite, I'm pretty sure works on both. Okay. The Van- the Call of Duty Treyarch engine, I'm pretty sure it works on both natively without having to futz with it. Okay. So what's the excuse? The the excuse being that not Sony doesn't use Unreal Engine 5 natively they for all Unreal, the games. They use Unreal Engine 5 for a ton of their games. Okay, what does God of War run on? I don't fucking know. Sony Santa Monica bullshit. Okay, well, probably, is... probably the same engine as fucking Kojima's game. No, I don't know. Fucking you see, this is, my, this is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you're, you're trying to you're trying to take a game engine that was built exclusively to run on the PlayStation game and, engine, and now make it support proprietary PCs. engine. So that's okay. So hold on. Again, I brought up earlier that Xbox can do it without any harm. But then you said, well, PlayStation can too, 
because they're also 64 bit. But now you're backtracking and saying, well, they, they built proprietary engines. Whose fucking fault is that? God of War came out. We're tr- okay, first off, we're saying two different things. Are we? Right. Yes, because what I'm saying is, is that with it being a PC engine, it is capable of running games in an emulator. It doesn't have You're to run saying games in an emulator. It, it would have to if it's trying to run a PlayStation 3 game. Yes, it would. We're not talking about PlayStation 3 games! How are we not talking about PlayStation 3 games? I just brought up current games. We were talking about current games. I know, but that's what I'm trying to say. We're talking about two different things now. Why? You're you're asking me why it took so long for God of War and Horizon and all these to get there. Uh It's because the engines themselves were not originally built to run on more than one system. That's right. Because not have to that's, adapt. You're you're right. PCs didn't exist whenever those games first came out. My that's apologies. Not, I'll that's stop. That's not what I'm saying. I'll stop. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is it was not meant. To I'm run. standing up. Hold on one second. It's oh, time oh, to argue. No. Oh, you're gonna hear that whir. That can you buzz, actually hear buzz. it? I don't know if you can hear it. I want to hear it. I'm saying though that it wasn't meant to run on more than one graphics adapter. Now all of a sudden they have to write drivers for it to run on fucking multiple graphics cards. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. It, it can just run on AMD. Yeah, they but use what about AMD. me? I don't, have uh, to I don't give AMD. a fuck. They don't care. I feel, Sony. I feel like I'm talking to David right now. It's like talking to a brick yeah, wall. You can talk. You can act like you're talking to David, but I'm smarter. So that's why your whole problem with this argument is. The point yeah. is, you were talking about, well, they built it for PlayStation. Yes, I agree. I agree. But we were okay. talking about why can't they do it? If the console can do X64 executables, uh huh. Why don't they program in X64 so it just natively runs? Because that's not this. Okay, is that not how computers work? You program in 64 there, and it works on 64-bit? No. There's so much more that goes into it. Well, I agree. I agree with you. I agree you're, with you're, you. You're oversimplifying it so much. I'm oversimplifying it so much that I'm wrong? Yes. Oversimplifying it like saying, why doesn't PlayStation just let them download their games? Yeah. Joe, tell me. So, again, I, I'm confused. Are you talking about... You, you think that PlayStation stops it because they don't want to have to program for a million different configurations that could possibly come out of putting it on PC? Right, because that's not, that's not the way the original pipeline was designed. Is now, it, but isn't that part of the now, engine? Now, that being said, because they have released Horizon uh-huh. and um, Death Stranding, which is running off of the Horizon engine, uh-huh. And mm-hmm. God of War, which is running on their own, they've now built up the support uh-huh. to allow it to run on multiple graphics engines. So going forward, okay, right? They have going forward, they have no excuse. Correct. They okay. they should, in theory, they could release God of War Ragnarok, uh huh, day and date, the same time. Now, are they going to? No, I seriously doubt it. Because no. they're Sony, they, they right. want multiple purchase cycles. Right. The yep. The whole thing with it going to PC finally is uh, there was an article, Corley Barlog for for God of War that was released. He was asked, "Why is this coming on PC all of a sudden?" The internal studios have been fighting for years. To yeah. Also released their stuff on PC, but Sony was like, "No, no, no. We're only going to do it on our console. It's got to be exclusive. Got to be exclusive." And I think they're just now starting to realize, because Sony is fucking stupid, that there's another revenue stream here that's here to untapped. They could potentially benefit from this. Mm-hmm. So what I'm trying to say at the end of the day is that Sony's dumb for not releasing it on PC, right, up until now. And then they're also dumb because they have not developed a capable Xbox Game Pass competitor. That's and that's my TED talk. 
Thank you all for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, Good job, Jeff. You got the last word in. I did. (laughs) Not intentionally. Um, (laughs) Appreciate you all for joining us tonight. And I've had Mr. Todd. I've had Mr. Nick. I'm not using last names anymore. Too much work. So next time, uh, we got stream right after this for uh, Wednesday Warfare. Mm. Oh, Todd says, I don't know. Are you feeling sleepy, Todd? It's almost my bedtime. But you're standing. I know. That's the only reason. That's the only reason I'm awake. Let's get this stream started. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.